in that industry kind of has that same passion to train and everything so once you do that and you can just ask people questions and you just gang your knowledge from books questions and everything like that that's a great way to start okay yeah doggy daycares are great you can read a lot of dog body language and really um, go with like the smaller dogs and see the, like, how the process all works cool yeah thanks for your question Coleman John, anytime. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, the question is, is it are, are some dogs more intelligent than other dogs? Uh, so yes, uh, there are some breeds that are definitely a little more intelligent than others, but it also is like situational on the dog. So if you get a litter of dogs, meaning they're all brothers and sisters and everything, there's going to be some dogs that are definitely a little smarter than the others, but that doesn't mean that any dog is untrainable because they're not smart as the other one. Um, most of them are still very food motivated. Food is like money in their mind, you know? And so when you can give them a task to do and you give them food for it, then they're going to want to do that task for you. And so some dogs might learn it quicker than others, but all dogs can definitely learn it. All right. Awesome question. Does anyone else have a dog? Coleman, do you have a dog at home? I wish. Oh yeah? <laughs> what kind of I dog wish. do you think you'd get? Do you know? I would get a golden lab. Nice. They're so cute. Yeah, those are great family and dogs. I would also get like a husky because they're really into talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they talk a lot, definitely. And they can p pull you around on the sled in the winter, too. That's what they do up in Alaska. Yeah, I think that's what <laughs> Tell them we went. Well. Yeah, we actually went to Alaska when I was eight years old, and we got to see, like, um, some Dita mushing one. teams, is what they're called, run by with uh, their pack yeah. of dogs. Yeah, it was awesome. I went floating in my woods once. A dog came out of nowhere. She slipped under a fence, mm -hmm. and um, she went into the woods area. Snow everywhere. So, she was, like, invisible to us. <laughs> yeah, the Bichons you know, the... <laughs> the white dogs in the snow are definitely hard to see. Yeah. And lucky Lana's got a couple darker spots, so she stands out a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's funny. My dog's just completely... Sean. Hey, Coleman, what's up? One time we were at the preschool, at the, um, at the high school, mm -hmm. and then, like, I was standing on the bleachers, and then all of a sudden, a really energetic golden retriever ran at me. Oh, right to you? Yeah. Nice. And you get to pet him? Oh. <laughs> well, it seems like he chose you. Dogs have, like, a good sense of, um... Smell. Yeah, a good sense of smell, and they have a good sense of uh, like people that get along with dogs really well. So it seems like he chose you. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Any other questions? Uh, what is the percentage of dogs that can sleep in, like, that sleep on a bed and not on a bed? So that's just up to uh, the owner, honestly. So. Uh, um, as long as you create like a boundary and let them know that you need to be invited up to the bed, then going on the furniture is perfectly fine. But there are some situations where just to ensure you're doing like proper leadership exercises to make sure your dog sees you as kind of like the head of their pack, um, there are situations where we recommend not going on to your bed right away. But yeah, once, once you've had the dog for a while, it's it's always a pretty good bonding experience to have them like right there on the couch with you or anything like that. Yeah, my dog just jumps on the furniture all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and do you guys, are you guys okay with that? Yeah, like it can be my bed, it can be my sister's, it can be my mom's dad, it can yeah. be on the couch, anywhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of people in America are 
very um, keen to having the dogs on their bed. In yeah. different different cultures, a lot of dogs are kind of like street dogs, and they're just viewed as animals, just as we view like a squirrel or a rabbit or anything like that. Yeah, but I, it's I, a lot more homely here. I would add sometimes when they the little ones when they get older, they might have hip problems, and you might want to have a little stairway, yeah, something to help them up. Yeah, they. Uh, my dog's kind of having like a little leg seizures right now. Oh really? Yeah. And what, what? She has them every once in a while. She's like. She, her tail goes down and like she just sits there in pain for like three minutes. Oh, there. No. And what's the vet say about that? Have they checked her out? We haven't checked. We haven't been able to check because of COVID. Okay. She started like just before. Okay. Yeah. Next, next yeah. available chance you get, I'd, I'd say, um, see what your vet says about something like that. Yeah. Sean, I have a written question from Matthew. He wants okay. to know what it means if a dog is eating grass outside. Okay. Um, hi, Matthew. Uh, so, for the most part, dogs eat grass because their stomach feels upset, and that's a way that they can provoke themselves to throw up. But sometimes it's just they're bored, and a lot of dogs are just very mouth fixated, so they just kind of want to chew on anything. So, if you bring like a bone out there, or maybe you're okay with them chewing a stick if you're supervising them. That's like a good way to try and get them off of obsessively eating grass. I remember a dog just eating grass. <laughs> like my neighbor, they have a dog and it's a golden retriever. Yeah. So eat the grass. Just <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, a lot of dogs do it. Um, there are some like sprays out there, like bitter apple sprays that don't very, taste very well and so if you have like a designated spot you don't want your dog to chew or eat you can spray a little bit of that on there and see if that helps I have uh, another written question from Kim Okay. she wants to know uh, she and her family are thinking of adopting a dog and her mom wants to know if dogs can understand two languages and I happen to know the answer to this but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Dogs can understand uh, multiple languages, definitely. And the reason is, is because what we're saying to them, um, like English, Spanish, whatever the language may be, it kind of all sounds the same to them anyways. They don't technically speak any of our languages. You can associate any word. With the word sit, you can make that any word that you want. Words are just something that you give value to by repeating what they mean and what that stands for. So yeah, you can definitely have a dog. Um, a lot of people use German actually for like higher working dogs. So like instead of like heel, the German word for that is Fuss. So yeah, um, Lana actually knows a couple German words herself. I used to have a dog and my son speaks several languages fluently and he used to speak to her in different languages and she understood some commands in his different languages. Yeah. And Unfortunately, my dog learned how to spell. I used to spell the word walk all the time. Oh, yeah. They catch on eventually. picked up on it, and one day I said, do you want to go take the dog out for W-A-L-K? And she bolted for the door. I said, oh, no, she's yep. figured out spelling now. <laughs> yeah, once you do something enough, that habit, they can pick up on it. And it's funny, too. Um, when I worked at a doggy daycare, there were some dogs there that had like uh, last names like Lopez or something like that. And us workers would always be like, oh, these dogs really never listen to what we're saying. And one time we told them to sit in Spanish. We told them, siéntate. And they, they listened right away. So there's some situations like that where you meet a dog and you never really think about speaking another language to them. But it turns out that's the language they know. Interesting. Sean, I, 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 I have a question about click training, Sean. Because remember that dog that we rescued, Lucy, that we, she was a mess when we got her. And then as she settled down, we got a clicker and we realized that her prior owners, wherever she came from, had used click training because she responded to clicks. Can you talk about click training? Yeah, so clicker training has been scientifically proven to train dogs um, quicker than just using our words. And the reason for that is because the click sound is something that doesn't come out of our mouth. It's a very distinct sound that they don't really hear. Um, since we're talking to each other all the time, our language can get kind of lost in that. 
And so the clicker is a very consistent sound. It's the same exact sound every time. And so when you mark a good behavior with that, you tell them to sit, they sit, you click it, and then you give them a treat. And that's where classical conditioning comes in. Um, the kind of, the bell uh, makes the dog salivate if you give it a treat af after every time you ring a bell. Same thing with the clicker. If every time you click the clicker, you give them a treat, eventually they're gonna know that the clicker means that they did something good. Thank you.